Hey everybody, David here, and I wanted to share a couple of things. This is going to be my autograph collection uh, video, where I am going to be sharing my autographs with you guys, and uh, because maybe you guys are interested, you know, maybe some of you go to conventions too, and one of the things I like to go to conventions, usually the conventions I go to is Fan Expo Canada, which is in August, uh, down here in Toronto and uh, Toronto Fan Expo, which is this weekend, which is just finishing off today. I, I only went on Saturday, though. And uh, usually I like to go and meet the actors that are showing up down there. And, you know, sometimes I meet two, sometimes I'll meet... I think there was only one time I met four actors in one weekend. And um, that's because they were four actors I really wanted to meet. Uh, I don't remember who they were that weekend, but I have a whole bunch of autographs here that I want to share with you guys and show you one by one all the autographs that I have collected including the most recent ones which I'm going to share first and because I'm going to be organizing these in my book that I keep these all in and I like to keep them all in a specific order right like I like to keep like certain uh, actors in a certain group when I put them in my book like the, the Star Wars actors are in one section you know Smallville actors in another section etc etc so um, so I'm going to share with the first one here and the, one of the actors, I met two actors this weekend, this Saturday, and the first actor I met was Robbie Amell, who you all might remember from, uh, The Flash, he played Firestorm, although he returned as, uh, Deathstorm in the recent episode, the, the Welcome to Earth 2 episode, where he was a bad guy named Death, you know, he was Deathstorm instead of Firestorm. So yeah, I wrote that, uh, he gave me a fist bump, it was cool, he was really cool, and he wrote all the best. Most of them do write all the best, if they don't know what to write, they write all the best, or thanks, or something, or best wishes, or something like that. So that was cool, he was a cool guy. And uh, also yesterday I met, who also wrote all the best, is uh, Karen Allen, who played Marion in... Um, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, or just Raiders of the Lost Ark, and uh, yeah, I wanted. I saw her lining up. It was uh, pretty short, <laughs> so I thought to myself, you know what? Okay, I'll go meet her because originally I was gonna go meet uh, Jason Isaacs, but his lineup was too long, and I don't like standing in line for too long with crowded people. I get nervous, and Robbie Amell's lineup was. It wasn't long, but it wasn't short either. It was decent, so I th thought, okay, yeah. But I knew I was going to go meet him for sure because I love The Flash. And I, I like to try to meet as many actors from that show as I can and say how much I love it and show my appreciation for it. And so her, um, I met her, and I, when I went up to her, I told her, I, because I'm honest, I'm not going to lie to an actor. I'm, I'm going to tell them how much I like their work. And I told her up front, out of all the leading ladies in Indiana Jones, you were my favorite. And she she was very happy. She was very kind. She said, oh, my God, thank you. And so it was cool. It, put, it puts a smile on my face when I see that they're happy because it's like people like to, you know, be acknowledged that they have done good work. And these, these are the actors and people that I think have done good work. Now, here's one that um, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really have a great experience with. Stan Lee. Not because I don't like Stan Lee, but I blame this more on the convention uh, because I think he was, they were trying to rush him to go to a photo op. So they were rushing people through the line. And so unlike most celebrities, when I meet them, uh, usually they acknowledge me that I'm there. They'll be high, even if I'm nervous, you know, um, and he did not look at me once. And so I felt like it was a waste of $80. There were only two celebrities that I paid $80 for. And this one felt like a waste to me because it's like, what was the point if he doesn't even say hi or doesn't even acknowledge, like, who's, who's he writing for? Like, he didn't even know who he was writing this for. Like, just a name. To me, it just seems like a waste of money if they're just going to waste my time like that. And, uh... But what do I care because I'm just going to meet this person once and whatever. Uh, but at least acknowledge the person, you know, and say, hello, hi, nice to meet you, David. Okay. Writing your autograph. That's what most of them do, and that's fine to me. I don't need to have long out conversations with them. I just want the autograph and just a little acknowledgement that, hey, you're my fan? Cool. So uh, this one, 
Anthony Daniels, C-3PO from Star Wars. Um, this was at Celebration, I think Celebration 4. I think that was the only Star Wars celebration that I've been to. So most of these Star Wars ones you're going to see now are from Celebration 4. And uh, Anthony Daniels, I'll just say it wasn't a fun experience. He was... I'll just leave it at that. Um, Tamora Morrison, who played Jango Fett from Star Wars Episode Two: Attack the Clones. He was really cool. Yeah, he was a cool guy. And um, one person that I didn't get, but my brother got his autograph. Both my brothers and one of their girlfriends. Uh, Daniel Logan, who played young Boba Fett in Episode Two. He was a really cool dude. And even though I didn't get his autograph, I'll, I'm going to tell you this story, my experience. Um, we, did, Me and my brother and his girlfriend, we, we knew it was his birthday that weekend. So what we did was we, we got him, a, we looked for an action figure of Boba Fett and we signed it. Us, we signed it and gave it to him because he was really cool and he helped cheer up um, my brother's girlfriend after after uh, Anthony Daniels uh, said or did something. Uh, not terrible, but it was just something that was like... Anyways, without getting into too much detail, he was cool and he cheered, he cheered her up. So to pay it back in return, you know, to say thank you, uh, we kind of bought him a gift and gave it to him and signed it ourselves. And uh, it was really cool. And then like a couple months went by and we were at Fan Expo in Toronto, like we usually do. And he saw them. I wasn't there at the time, but they told me the story. That uh, he saw them there at, because he was at Fan Expo also. And he recognized them. And uh, he thanked them again for the, the gift. So that was really cool that, that he still held on to that Boba Fett that we um, signed, on, uh, signed for him and gave it to him for his birthday. That was pretty cool. I don't know if he still has it. He probably threw it away by now. Who knows? Um, I try not to think of the worst, but whatever. Uh, Ray Park, Darth Maul, one of the best Star Wars villains of all time. He also played Toad in the first X-Men movie. You might remember that. Um, yeah, he was a badass, man. I liked him. It was a quick meet and greet. I said, hey, nice to meet you. I was very shy. During my early years of going to conventions, I was always shy, so... So, the next person I have is, uh, you might remember her, Claire from Heroes. I was a huge fan of uh, Heroes, the early seasons. And if you look carefully, she wrote XOXO. So, uh, I like to pretend she had the hots for me. Yeah. Actually, I was uh, really nervous to meet that one because uh, uh, th that was still one of the earlier celebrities that I met. That, that um, when I met them... I, I didn't know what to say. I froze and I was like, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, I felt like whenever I think back to that moment, I was like, oh, David, you're such an idiot. But uh, it just shows you, you just got to think beforehand. Like I've learned since then, like to think beforehand and remember, they're just like anybody else. They're just meeting people that appreciate their work and just tell them how you feel about their work. Tell them you were a big fan of their show. Uh, if you have any interests in, you know, the, the movie world like I do, like I've told some actors that I've been interested in, in, in pursuing acting or directing or whatnot. And uh, then that starts a little bit of conversation. They might even give you a little bit of advice about the that field. So that's always useful. Another Heroes actor I met was uh, the actor who played Ondo from Heroes. So that was really cool. He said, uh, yeah, to David. Most of them, most of them do. Um, some Power Ranger actors I got here. Uh, if you watched Power Rangers Wild Force, least favorite season, one of my least favorite seasons, uh, Alyssa, the white Wild Force Ranger, um, played by Jessica Ray. Um, yeah, she just wrote Wild Access. That was cool. That was when I went to Power Morphicon, so that was back in 2000. I think that was 2010. That was Power Morphicon 2. Yeah. And uh, Vernon Wells. Uh, for those of you that are not Power Ranger fans, you might remember him in the Mad Max, The Road Warrior, the second Mad Max film. He actually played uh, one of the main villains, and he wrote, 
David, you can run, but you can't hide. And I always read that in Rancic's voice. That that wasn't me doing Rancic's voice, though. So, um, yeah. Uh, this one got two actors on the same one. Jason Font, who played the Red Ranger, who's in the middle there. And Irene Cahill, who played Jen, the pink Time Force Ranger. These are both from Time Force. I was a huge Time Force fan. And uh, still am. Yeah, Time Force is one of my favorite seasons of all time. Check uh, out my top 10 Power Ranger seasons of all time. And uh, yeah, Jason Font wrote David all the best, just like most of these actors do. Uh, Iron Codhill wrote something really cool. Um, thank you for being so great and awesome. That's what, I think she wrote great or yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great. Uh, but yeah, she, oh man, when I met her, she put the biggest smile on my face. She was so, she was so amazing to meet. Um, I got another autograph from Jason, uh, Jason Font, who played the Red Time Force Ranger. And he actually gave this one for me. Like that one I had to pay for, just like every other actor. This one, he actually, um, gave it to me for free because I told him that when Time Force was airing, I had written, um... A fan letter to him, and he had sent me a um, he had sent me a, an autograph photo, and I told him that I still have that autograph photo at home, which I do. I, I'm not sure where I put it now. I think it's still at my parents' place, but uh, I still have it, and along with a couple of others from Time Force and Wild Force, and um, I don't know why I have a lot of Wild Force autograph, but anyways. So I still have the letter and the autograph that he sent me, and it, I, I guess he was so felt by that, like, he must have been so moved, like, wow, this guy's has been a long-time fan, and he still has my autograph from 2001, so he, he gave me that second autograph for free, um, he said, here, man, take this, <laughs> thanks, man, uh, another one, I was a huge fan of Hercules and Xena, so here is Kevin Sorbo, I met him, he was really cool. That This was at Fan Expo. Most of these are at Fan Expo and Toronto Comic Con. And uh, yeah, I mean, Kevin Sorbo was cool, man. And Hercules, right? Uh, that's my ideal Hercules. People would go Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who's good too. I mean, I could see how him and Kevin Sorbo can kind of have similar... Um, Ke Dwayne The Rock Johnson is a better actor, but um, Kevin Sorbo was still cool. I liked meeting him. Uh, I talked about this one. If you watched my DVD Tuesday recently, I, I showed off my Blu-ray DVD of Stephen Amell signing it. And this was actually the first time I met Stephen Amell signing uh, just a simple autograph to David. And uh, so that was before, that was after season one aired. So the Blu-ray didn't come out yet because I think the Blu-ray came out on in September. And Fan Expo is always in August, like a, or it was like two or three weeks before the DVD. So I didn't have the DVD for him to sign. So when he came back the second time, the next year, I had season one on DVD, even though season two was my favorite season. But I let him know that. I, I told him, hey, I met you last year, so I really wanted to meet you again because I thought you were really cool. And yeah, he was really cool about that. He seemed really cool. He, he tried shaking my hand the second time, though. And I had sweaty hands, and I felt bad, so I, like, pulled away a little bit, and he, like, looked at me like, what the, why is he pulling his hand away? And I told, oh, my, my hands are sweaty, and he laughed, he thought it was, I guess, I, I, I guess he thought it was adorable or something. Oh, this, this fan is trying to save me from his sweaty hands. And then I told someone online, and they told me, David, why didn't you just fist bump him? And I'm like, oh, shit. But I got Robbie O'Mel, I fist bumped to Robbie O'Mel, but he started it, so... I don't know. Um, Smallville time. Got Michael Shanks, who played Hawkman. And he was there. More, more people probably know him from uh, Stargate SG-1, the TV series. But uh, I didn't watch that series too much. So I told him I was there because Smallville was awesome to me. I love Smallville. I still do. And speaking of Smallville, we've got some more actors here. You might remember this one. James Marsters. They didn't have no Brainiac pictures of him from Smallville, so they only had Angel. And uh, I didn't watch Buffy or Angel, so... So, yeah. There. But he was really good, too. I liked him. Um, Sam Witwer, who played Davis Bloom, a.k.a. the human version of Doomsday, 
on Smallville, met him. Uh, he was doing uh, Star Wars Clone Wars at the time, and I remember someone at the table asking him questions about it, how the series was getting a little bit more darker. And uh, Actually, those are the seasons of Clone Wars where I did feel the show was getting better and better, so... Um, I, I told him that I was going to watch it eventually, and it took me a couple of years to eventually get to it. So um, there, I made up my promise, I guess. Uh, this one was cool. I liked her. Uh, Laura Vandevort, who played Kara, a.k.a. Supergirl on Smallville. She was the only one that wrote to Davey. Um, so that was really cool. And XOXO, whenever they write XOXO, Hugs and Kisses, I think it's because they find me attractive. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? I found myself attractive. Uh, this one. Allison Mack, a.k.a. Chloe. She was really cool. I liked her. Um, I, I think she was a little nervous. Maybe because I was a guy or something. I don't know. Maybe she found me attractive, too, so she was nervous. I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting, Every girl finds me attractive. Um, David, all the best. Uh, this one. Aaron Ashmore. Not to get confused with Sean Ashmore. He played Jimmy Olsen on Smallville. He appeared on the show, I believe, in Season 6 and was killed off at the end of Season 8. So, really cool to meet him. He was one of the actors I, that I told um, I was really interested into getting into the field of movies and television. Uh, yeah, he gave some helpful advice that I took, sort of. Um... <laughs> Uh, Sean Ashmore, the twin brother of Aaron Ashmore. That's right, I met both twins. What's up, man? And obviously from X-Men, played Iceman. If, uh, those of you that don't remember, if you don't like watch any of these movies or shows, then you're not going to know who these guys are. But I'm guessing most people who are looking at this are aware of most of these shows and movies. Believe me, you'll, you'll be surprised how many people I show these autographs to, and they're like, who's this guy? What what show are they from? Like, people... <laughs> you'll be amazed sometimes. Um, oh, uh, John Rhys Davies, who played Gimli in Lord of the Rings. Um, he also was in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He's been in tons of things, this guy. His voice is so recognizable. And, but yeah, I had to get for Gimli in Lord of the Rings, right? I mean... Gimli, Legolas, and Aragorn are like my three favorite characters on that show, so it was a no-brainer for me to get that one. Uh, Jason Isaacs was at this year's Toronto Comic Con, and I really wanted to get his autograph because I think he's an amazing actor. But uh, from, like I said earlier, I, I didn't go up and meet him, but I did go up and meet Draco Malfoy. And if you look, he writes, To David, love Tom Felton. And I get made fun of this one a lot because he wrote love. And it's like, guys, grow up. I mean, maybe he was attracted to me too. Who the heck knows? Um, I am a good looking guy. I don't know how many guys like me, but hopefully a lot more girls like me. But either way, you know what? It's all flirtation. I'll take it all as a compliment. Um, Christopher Lloyd, Back to the Future. I got this one just in case I ever met Michael J. Fox, which I'm going to doubt I ever will, but you'll never know what will happen. There are some actors that I got to meet here in this list that's something you already saw that I didn't think I'd ever meet, and uh, eventually I did, so there you go. Uh, Ron Perlman, Hellboy. He's been in a lot of other films too, but uh, Hellboy was the one that I really wanted because I really love that movie. And uh, I love a lot of his performance. Like, he's also been in uh, Blade 2. He's been in Pacific Rim. It, the list goes on and on. Just search it up. I mean, he's done a lot of animated stuff, too. I know he did the voice of Clayface in Batman, the animated series. He, he has a long list of uh, great movies and shows that he's been on. Um, this is one of the bigger actors I have met that I thought I never would. Um, especially, I don't know. Patrick Stewart, uh, Professor Xavier, a.k.a. maybe more famous for Pat, uh, Captain Picard on Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, yeah, he was really cool. I, 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 this was the second actor that I paid $80 to go meet. And this was a little bit more worth it because at least he looked at me and he's like, Hello there. And I'm like, 
Hello, and I was a little nervous because it's freaking Patrick Stewart, man. I mean, Captain Picard, Professor Xavier. I mean, this is guy. He's an amazing actor, right? He's like looking at me like I exist, and sometimes it's just amazing. Like when you actually get to meet people who are part of your favorite movie or show. I mean, if I was like that during Patrick Stewart, I don't even know what I would be like with Hugh Jackman. Um, oh, but here's a fellow Canadian, um, Nathan Fillion. And I actually got his autograph. <laughs> this is a castle uh, photograph, but I got it for uh, Firefly, and I was a fan that he was like also Green Lantern at the time, and he did the voice of Green Lantern. So uh, that's also why I got his voice, and because I think he's a great actor, no matter what he's in, right? So um, uh, here we got uh, Sam. Oh man, Sam Huntington, I think. He played uh, Jimmy Jimmy Olsen in Superman Returns, and I love Superman Returns. And yeah, that's two Jimmy Olsens. Let's see. Uh, so he was really cool, and I I got this autograph because I was planning to get if I ever met Brendan Routh, because usually I just like to get the single post uh, pictures where they're by themselves, because and that's why I try to avoid those ones nowadays. Because guess what? A couple years later. I finally met Brendan Routh, but I realized that I wanted a picture of him as Superman because I love Superman Returns. I told him, uh, I told him, look, I, I, Superman Returns is one of my top ten movies of all time. I think it was over-exaggerating a little bit. I was talking about superheroes only, so one of my top ten superhero movies of all time. It, and then I realized later that day, oh, actually, no, I have a couple of other ones over that in the top 10 but uh i still love superman returns it, you can watch my review i think it's an underrated film i love it i think brendan routh was an awesome superman so getting to meet brendan was uh really cool and when i told him that he put happy to make the top 10 so he was he was happy to hear that and i remember he asked me so what's number one and i told him it's the dark knight <laughs> I was I, I could I should have said Dark Knight trilogy, but I just said Dark the Dark Knight, right? And the girl beside him, who the assistant was laughing, and uh, my brothers in the background were like, <laughs> you know. But he took it like a sport. He was like, okay, fine, whatever. Which one was that one again? And so I told him, and um, the Heath Ledger one, and yeah, he was cool. He, it's lucky he didn't tell me what was my number uh, two because after the Dark Knight trilogy comes Man of Steel, that would have sucked. Um, uh, next on my list, Carl Urban, uh, he plays Bone McCoy in the new Star Trek films, he also played, um, uh, D Dredd in the new Judge Dredd movie, he's been in tons of films, I think he was also in the second Bourne film with Matt Damon, and, but the show I remember him first from, you know, before he's, he's been in all over these, all these films, the movie I remember him the most, uh, the show I remember him the most from, was Xena Warrior Princess, where he played Caesar. He was Caesar, you know, the Roman. And uh, so I told him that, and he's like, oh man, that's like a long time ago. I'm like, yeah, man, I knew you before you were famous. <laughs> I didn't say that, but that's what was going on in my mind. Um, and finally, last autograph I have here to show off, I met Adam West. Probably one of the funniest celebrities I have ever met. And one of the coolest, definitely. Um, Grandpa Batman, I like to call him. Because he, he's, he is the oldest Batman, right? So you gotta call him Grandpa Batman. And uh, he, yeah, like I said, he was the funniest. I remember me, this was still during the early days where I was very nervous meeting celebrities. And we went up to him and he was really nice and welcoming. And he was like... Hello, David. Uh, so who are these beautiful people? You guys are such a bunch of beautiful people. I don't know if that was a compliment or if it was like dissing us or like he was saying some undertones that we weren't aware of. It, it sounded funny to us. So we were we were all laughing. We thought he was great. Got distracted by some girls in, behind us who were dressed as Wonder Woman and Supergirl. And he, oh, look, there's Wonder Woman. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, and Supergirl too. And uh, so, David, do you have any more of your family here? <laughs> I want to meet more of this beautiful family. I, I think Adam West found us all attractive. And I mean, I mean that goes to the proof of the other girls 
that kept writing XOXO. And uh, Draco Malfoy even wrote Love Tom Felton, you know. I, I think I attract some of these celebrities very dearly, and some of them have fallen in love with me. And Adam West was the first, what can I say? And uh, I'm going to end it here, guys. Those were all my autographs that I've gotten throughout the years. I think I've been doing these conventions for uh, maybe 10 years. 10, maybe 10. I'm going to guess 10. I've been doing it for 10 years. And, uh, you know, at first, it's a, when you're doing it for the first time, you're meeting your celebrities that have been in some of your favorite movies or shows. They play some of your favorite characters. It is a little nerve-wracking at first, but try to get in your mind that they might be nervous too. Because, the, remember, a lot of actors that get into acting are usually people that are pretty shy. And so you're not the only ones that are shy to meet them, you know? You're... You're in there. You're in their wheelhouse. They're just on the opposite side of you. You know, they're the one giving you the autograph because that's their. That's like another side of their job for some of them. Just tell them from the bottom of your heart that you like what they did, and you like their character. And like when I told Karen Allen to, uh, yesterday that I thought she was the best leading lady in any Indiana Jones film, I could tell she was very touched about it. And uh, if you just tell them honestly how you feel. Um, they'll really appreciate that. Some actors might be a little grumpy. Don't take it personal. Like, some people take things personal when an actor is, like, rude to them or something like that. But just, like, Anthony Daniels, you know, he he wasn't rude, but there were some snarky remarks. And, but I won't take it personal because I've heard other people have different experiences with him. And that's what you have to try to get in your head. Like, maybe he was just having a bad day or something like that. So I try not to take things like that personal. Like the, the Stan Lee thing also, right? I try not to take that personal because that wasn't really his fault when I really look at it. That was the convention's fault for rushing him to get to the next photo ops that he had to do. So because Fan Expo has this weird thing about they separate the photos from the, from the, uh, from the autograph. So some actors still like to take pictures with the fans there at the table. Like, Robbie Amell was doing that, so that was cool. And, um, yeah, so who knows who I'm going to get next, but um, I'll let you guys know if I ever go to any more conventions, which most likely I will. I'll be going probably to the one this August Fan Expo, so we'll see. And uh, until next time, I'm really hoping Tom Welling or Grant Gustin will eventually come to a convention down here in Toronto. I really want to meet either one of them because I love Smallville, and I love The Flash, and those are two actors that I would like to meet and let them know how much I love their shows. And, uh, yeah, just to see how cool they are in person, too. That's, that's always the experience of it, because then it brings a new dimension uh, to the show, I think. Because it's like, oh, yeah, I met that guy. He now, yeah, it, like, it really makes it feel more real while watching it. And you get the idea on how uh, all that works. So, um, yeah, I'm going to end here, and uh, tell me if you want... Uh, what actors have you met at conventions? If you go, if you haven't gone, I don't know. Tell me who you want to meet. And uh, I'm going to end it here. Like this video. If you like all the autographs I showed you. Um, ask me any questions too if you guys want. Like, I don't know. Maybe I left something out. Like, uh, was his hand cold or was her... Don't ask any weird questions. That's weird. And uh, until next time, I'm going to end it here because this video is going to be too long. Take care.